Today, you guys, I'm gonna show you a little piece of my Irish side. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, back to share another video with you guys. Happy early St. Patrick's Day. I wanted to share this video a couple of days before St. Patrick's Day to give you guys the opportunity to cook these things for that special Irish day, if this be something that you're interested in or cook during the week before or after, being that it falls on the weekend, you really could go either way and have a little bit of Irish in me. So my mom is 100% Italian and my father father's mother was 100% Italian, but my father's father was only half Italian and a little bit of English and a little bit of Irish. So I still like to capitalize on that tiny little bit of Irish in me. And I know that that comes for my love of potatoes. Like I love potatoes. I almost love it as much as bread, which is why I probably could never do keto in my life because the bread and the potatoes, like I can't live without those things and irish dishes have so many great potato recipes and i'm excited to show you a few of them today that are fastly becoming my favorites in the house now today is not just any regular cooking video it is a collab video with my girlfriend amanda over at the hot mess mom you guys i have been i was her number six subscriber that's right one two three four five six subscriber i was so excited when she started her channel and she has just she has really just grown right in front of my eyes i am so impressed with her i absolutely love her she does all the same similar content that i do she does her what's for dinners you guys are killing it right now she's just she's really coming out to her own if you are a foodie like me i'm sure you are because that's what my channel is pretty much all about she really like i said has those same kind of loves and passions for food so she shares recipes and grocery hauls and her what's for dinners and what her kids take for lunch and personally on the outside like she is just a she really is an awesome chick she's from jersey we got that like new york jersey thing kind of connection thing going on and i know you guys will like her too so i will put all of her information at the end slate and in the description box like i do for every collab video and she has a dessert a drink and an appetizer to show you guys and i have an appetizer a main course and a side dish so so many great irish inspirations for your saint patrick's day so let's get down to the counter and show you what i got today Okay, you guys, so here we are at our first recipe where we are making Irish nachos, our appetizer. And essentially, we're just going to crisp up a potato so it serves as like a hard surface, like a chip, so that we can use it to layer like nachos. So you're going to need some green onion, you're going to need some thyme, some rosemary, some salt and pepper, some olive oil. I did choose the Little Potato Company potatoes. They were exact measurements, one and a half pounds, but I'll tell you why that's not going to work for us in just a minute. We needed some sour cream, some cheddar cheese, and some bacon. So the first thing that we're going to do is get that bacon crispy. I don't know about you guys, but I prefer to put bacon on a sheet pan. It is the easiest way for me my mom always used to cook her bacon in the frying pan and I don't know about you guys but that just used to freak me out it was just like a vat of hot grease and I always felt like that was a recipe for disaster so for me this is like a no fuss must kind of thing I just put all of my bacon on here and I usually use the grease in the pan to do something with it to add some kind of flavor to a salad or like a potato salad macaroni salad I end up using the pan to layer these potatoes so I'll show you guys that in just a second but now that we're at the cutting board to cut the potatoes let me just stop for a second and say that this is the second recipe and then pretty soon in just a moment it'll be the third recipe that I did not really listen to what the instructions say this week so you see here that you really need the pieces to be a quarter inch round that's what they're calling for so I got the little potatoes thinking that would make more sense and easier to get that quarter inch size however it called for russet potatoes i'm sure for a reason because it wanted you to have a bigger hull of a chip to get hard to scoop like you would a nacho chip i wasn't thinking that i was trying to take the easy way out and having an easier potato to maneuver to get that small 
coin shape, quarter inch round kind of essence that they were asking for. But for purposes of the actual meal that we're cooking, they probably should have been bigger potatoes. So if you guys do choose this recipe, I would definitely go ahead and get the bigger potato because it's gonna bake up to more the way that you need. So once I was done with cutting all of the potatoes, now we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients. So I needed two tablespoons of olive oil, and then you added the thyme, the rosemary, the salt and pepper, and then you're going to give everything a really good stir. You really want those potatoes to have a nice, even coating of all those seasonings and all of that olive oil. So once everything's got a really good stir, we're going to layer it on a sheet pan. And like I said, I ended up using that sheet pan that I cooked the bacon on. This really worked out perfect because you're gonna top these Irish nachos with the bacon anyways. So the extra oil really helped give the potatoes a really good crisp, as well as you really got that bacon flavor when you were eating the potatoes later. So I don't know about you guys, but I am all about that bacon life. Bacon and cheese and potatoes, it's like peanut butter and jelly in my world. So definitely a great combination i'm glad that i did that and the key here is to get a single layer as much as possible because we're going to cook this on a 450 degree oven for 20 minutes and you really want to get a good brown crisp on that other side and then once you get a brown crisp you're going to want to flip it over i had to step out to the grocery store so i asked daryl to flip these over for me while i was gone so maya and him did a really good job of flipping all of them over over. The little potatoes made it hard to get everyone flipped over perfectly. Again, that wouldn't have happened if we used the bigger potatoes, but nonetheless, he got them flipped over the best that he could. You can see how crispy that they are on that side. And then now we're going to put them back in the oven for another 20 minutes and we're going to get them crispy on the other side. Now, once the potatoes have achieved their crispiness and we take them back out of the oven, we're actually going to load them in a olive oil greased cast iron skillet which you guys was like the perfect amp up I love that they called for a cast iron skillet I feel like this is exactly the way you would get like Irish nachos served to you in a pub beautifully placed absolutely delicious like it really the cast iron skillet did a huge number for this and then we were going to top it with cheese now in the beginning I showed you guys like my bag of already pre-grated cheese but in my grocery haul you guys were telling me that they use like a coagulant on that stuff that's like wood chips which is why they call for the blocked cheddar so that's why I was out at the grocery store while Daryl was flipping my potatoes because I bought blocked cheddar and salsa for the topping so I gave a good grate of some fresh cheddar on top of all of this and then I chopped our bacon. I took five slices from what we had cooked previously. I let it cool so that was easier for me to crunch it up and then I topped it on top of these potatoes and then we're going to load that back in that 350 degree oven so we can get it nice and bubbly and cheesy and gooey and oh my goodness you guys like absolutely amazing. Let me zoom in for you guys on the dish okay so so good i love when cheese and bacon gets bubbly like that and of course we had to top it with sour cream because what goes better with bacon and cheese and potatoes but sour cream well of course some green onion right so we're going to add some green onion there and then we're going to dollop on some of that salsa so 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 good this was like exactly what a nachos would be just using a potato as a chip and as you see me grabbing that it would have been so much nicer to have like a bigger size chip but like i said nonetheless it was still super good i've learned my lesson and this is definitely something i'll be making again so now here we are guys at our second recipe and this is our side dish, which is Irish potato pancakes. Now, if you guys remember when I made my matzo ball soup recipe, I told you guys that potato pancakes are one of my absolute favorite things in life, but I am always afraid to make them because they take a lot of work with shredded potato. But these call for mashed potatoes. Now I don't do instant, that's why these basket of potatoes are here. We're gonna peel and make real mashed potatoes and then we're gonna go on with the rest of the ingredients. So we're gonna add some green onions then we need an egg some salt and pepper we're gonna fry in just a little bit of vegetable oil and we need some flour to make it thick 
other than that, that's it for the ingredients. So I'm gonna take you first into making my mashed potatoes. So I pretty much make my mashed potatoes just the way that my mom does. They are absolutely delicious and she taught me the best way to make them. So I first just started off by cleaning up all the potatoes. I wanted to show you guys, which is why I included peeling them, that I don't ever take all of the peel off. I do like a little bit of the peel. I feel like it does add a little bit of flavor, it adds color, and it also adds body to the actual mashed potatoes once you're making them. So once they're all done being peeled, we're just going to cut them up. I do usually clean them up a little bit and I take all the eyes off and all of that stuff and make sure that they're pretty much as much as you can the same size. So that really helps for when you're boiling up the potatoes that they're all cooked evenly as close to the same size as possible. So once we're all done cleaning them up and cutting them up, we're just gonna throw some water on top and we're gonna put them to a boil. I do like to salt my potatoes potato water just a little bit it really does add a good flavor to it kind of helps also pull the starch out of the potato so I'll salt my water and once it gets to a good boil and they become fork tender then we're just going to end up dumping them into a strainer I usually give the strainer a good dump and get all of the excess water off and then once I've done that I usually reach for my trusty potato masher I'll link this thing below I love it it's like super cheap on Amazon and super easy. As long as they're cooked through, it makes squishing the potatoes and mashing them so super easy. So now you're gonna see me here adding some margarine. So I normally do not add margarine. I am Paula Dean through and through. I love me some butter in my mashed potatoes, but my mom always makes the best mashed potatoes and I was always wondering exactly how she did it. And she says her trick is a margarine. So I added margarine and recently I've been doing that and oh my goodness, it really just makes the potatoes so super creamy. I never really knew that was my mom's secret. Again, I'm not one for margarine. I always feel it's more like chemically induced and it's not really my kind of thing, but whatever is in margarine, it does the job for the mashed potatoes. So between the margarine and the milk and a little bit of salt and pepper, they come out smooth and creamy, and this is going to be perfect for making our potato pancakes. Now I did make a double batch. We're not turning this whole thing into potato pancakes. I am making shepherd's pie later on in the week, so it's worked out perfect for me to kind of double batch right now because it's certainly going to help me later. So I actually was laughing. Dar was standing right beside me this entire time with his mouth open, like waiting for me to stir the seasonings in so he can taste it. And as soon as he put it in his mouth, he was like, oh yeah, your mama taught you well. So definitely my mom is known for her mashed potatoes. And I think that the margarine really was the trick. Now I do taste as I go along, always make sure to kind of work out my salt and pepper ratios. So now that our mashed potatoes are done, now we're going to add the extra ingredients. So first up is our green onions. Now it is listed in the recipe that it is optional, but I love me some green onions. So I just grabbed the best ones left out of this package between both recipes and one package of green onions. There was definitely some stragglers in there that weren't worth cutting. So I got the best out of what I could get. And then I put our mashed potatoes. I measured it out, I called for two cups. I'm Italian, I went a little heavy and went on the three cups and I think that kind of made my measurements off. So next time I'm going to be a little bit more strategic. I probably could have used some more egg. I did end up going back at the end and adding more flour just because I felt like it needed to be thicker in order to be that potato cake in the oil that I was looking for. So definitely, worked through this you can tell this was my first time even once i was done mixing and once i got the potato mixture into the pan it took me a little while to nail the fry oil so i don't know about you guys but i always feel like when you're frying something or even when you're making pancakes on a griddle right it always takes that like first time it never comes out perfect they're always like a weird color and it's a little off it takes like a full cycle in the pan for everything to kind of regulate for the temperature of the oil and the pan and everything to get cohesive to give you like this perfect 
whatever it is that you're making. So for this, it ended up being a little difficult at this moment as well when I thought like maybe I should have added more egg and flour. They weren't really sticking together. I did jack the heat up a little bit so that they would crisp faster and it would make it easier for me to flip it over. It definitely was a hot mess the first couple of times. But again, as I started to layer them into the pan, it became easier and easier to flip these. They were coming out more and more looking like the picture. So I really was excited because besides the fact that I love me some potato pancakes, I don't see myself just yet tackling that shredded potato, but being that this was mashed potatoes, think about the potential of what you can do with just leftover mashed potatoes. That's something that ends up like getting fed to the dogs after a while when nobody eats it. But if I could throw some spices in there and some green onion and throw it in a pan and fry it up, even if it's something that we're not going to use right there at that moment, I feel like it's something I can throw in a freezer bag and pull it out on a night when we do breakfast for dinner because these also could serve as like a hash brown concept. They were so, 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 so good. I did put them all on a paper towel once they were all done cooking just for all the excess grease to drip off. And once they were all done, I just topped them with some green onions. And oh my goodness, you guys, like again, this was just something that was really thrilling to me because besides a box mix, I've never really tried to take a hand at this at my own. So I really love them. If not for a side dish, using it like a potato cake, like I said, this would also be really perfect as a hash brown for some kind of breakfast. I don't know, how do you guys eat your potato pancakes? If you eat them, how do you like them? I serve mine with applesauce and with sour cream. It's like so super delicious. It's the absolute perfect topping for these things my favorite meal by far and i think my favorite out of all those recipes that i cooked for you guys today but now that we're done with this one let's get into our last and final recipe and that is for guinness pie okay guys and last but not least we are at our third recipe and this is for the guinness pot pie so i'm actually just using regular pillsbury pie crust it did call for flaky pastry dough but this is what i had on hand and then it called for three tablespoons of fresh cut garlic but I don't know I'm Italian I can't figure that I just tossed all the garlic in so more garlic the better called for some carrots called for some mushroom back here I have our Guinness I actually chose the drought stout I figured it would help really make a good glaze on the meat which it did uh, I called for some salt and pepper some rosemary a red onion I need two tablespoons of butter some celery stock we're gonna use a little bit of flour to coat our meat and the recipe did call for two and a half pounds. I couldn't find that. The closest I could find was two and a third. And I feel like I was missing just that little bit of meat, but it definitely will do. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna get a good coating on our meat. You need like a good flour base to kind of help coagulate and make a really good gravy. Gravy is like the key to a really good pot pie. So we're gonna start there. We're gonna throw all of our meat into a bowl and we're going to add all of our seasoning so we're gonna add our rosemary our salt and pepper and our flour and we're gonna give everything a really good toss so you want to make sure similar to our potatoes how we wanted that oil and the spices to get on every potato you want that salt that pepper that rosemary you want that including that flour to cover every single piece of the meat so once we get that all stirred up we're going to add that to a pan that i already have heated up on the stove with a little bit of olive oil and we're going to give the meat a really good braise and that's what that flour is for it's actually going to create like a crust on the outside and it's going to lock in all of those juices that's part of my favorite technique of cooking meat i guess is to braise and give it that lock in of juices that's what i love about mississippi chicken it doesn't even call for that in the recipe but i love putting it in a screaming hot pan and getting a good crust on the outside so you guys are going to see in the bottom of the pan that this the flour is sticking and the meat is sticking a little bit too it's not a big deal you actually want all that crust on the bottom once we add in just a moment the beer to the bottom of this pan Pan, it's going to loosen up all of those bits and it's going to take all of that flavor that's stuck to the bottom of the pan and it's going to bring it up to the surface. 
So now that our meat is all done, we're gonna go ahead and do our veggies. So I am going to use my Omni Chopper this time. It makes it so much easier when we have tons of veggies to cut. So we're gonna start off by doing the mushrooms. Then we're gonna add in the garlic, the celery, the carrots, and then the onion. And once we get all the veggies chopped up, we'll add them to that same pan we were just cooking in. So our veggies are done being cut and our pan is still screaming hot. So I threw in the two tablespoons of butter and then I added in all of our veggies. You don't need to cook these too, too long. They are going to sit for quite a while in the liquid, but you do want to braise them a little bit, get them good and tender. And now we're gonna add that bottle of beer. And again, that's gonna do all that it needs to do once it starts to boil and it's gonna bring up those bits at the bottom and it's gonna add flavor to all of that juice. And then you're gonna add back the meat we're gonna give it a good stir and I let it sit you guys for like two and a half hours nice and slow and look what it did it all reduced down and it made like this really thick delicious gravy so I took one bottom of the pie crust and layered a glass Pyrex pie dish and then I layered that stuff inside and then put the next pie crust on top I came back with a fork and went all the way around the edges and then I trimmed all the excess pie dough off don't forget to cut the little holes um, all along the inside of it it vents the pie and it allows all the steam to escape and nothing explodes in your gravy and your veggies and stuff don't go flying out all over your oven and I did that and repeated it with the second Pyrex dish. So inside of the oven, we have both of our pot pies and after about 45 to 50 minutes on 350, they look like that. Now remember your insides are already cooked. So really all we're trying to do is brown and cook that pie crust. Like look at that bubbling. Oh my goodness, so delicious. It almost looks black on the inside because that stout just made this really thick, delicious gravy that was so, so good. And that is it you guys that's it for all three of these recipes so hopefully you liked them if you're doing anything this St. Patrick's Day and you're going to make any of these recipes please come back and let me know in the comments below what you thought of them if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up don't forget guys to go and check out Amanda she really is super super amazing I know you guys are gonna love her she really is just becoming quite a quality youtuber and I really appreciate all of her hard work and I know that you guys will too if you guys came from Amanda's channel thanks so much for stopping over I really appreciate it again I hope you guys enjoyed this video happy st. Patrick's Day and I'll see you guys all next time bye guys